what requires effort, sweat and strong will, and Macron knows it. A leading global company with the Italian DNA in the production and sale of sportswear, when Macron first entered the sports world in 1971, he was a small yet strong player. Since then, Macron has been growing at a very fast pace, supporting teams, sportsmen and at all levels. Working hard to supply them with technical products to help improve their performances. With over 4 million pieces of stock available in our Italian warehouse, including an extensive range of on-field, off-field and free-time products, we cater for everyone from amateurs to professional sporting organisations. Ranked third most prominent football brand by UEFA, Macron keeps expanding its presence worldwide and now even includes Croatian giants Hajduk Split, HNL Prva Liga outfit NK Šibenik, as well as Melbourne-based Croatian community club NK Bunker, amongst its ever-growing international family. And there are more to come. Work hard, play harder, Macron, your next teamwear partner. For more information, visit our website at www.macronvic.com.au or call us now on 1-800-MACRON. Good evening and a very warm welcome to you. It is a warm one indeed. You are tuning in to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. It's going to be an absolute ripper tonight. We cannot wait. It is going to be uh, um, the show of all shows. It's a special Australia Day edition of the show. My name is Taunchi Prusats and with me as he is every week, Josip Zilic. Josip, how are you? Fantastic. Thanks, Tonchi, and happy Australia Day to everybody. I hope you've had an opportunity to sit back and reflect this, on this great nation of ours. Absolutely. It is, it's is. been a sweltering one down south in Victoria. It's been a humid one. It's been almost uh, tropical-like. What's it been like up there in Queensland today? It's been a bit grey, a bit humid all day, but uh, it's been quite great today. So um, I've just been enjoying some of the festivities <laughs> in the street. There were some people singing along. So looks like people have been having a good Australia Day. Yeah, that's the way. That's the way. Well, you're up in the in in Queensland. I'm down in Victoria, and halfway in between, we've got the Australian Capital Territory. And speaking of Australia Day, what more appropriate um, city to visit to feature than the the nation's capital? And tonight. Um, we've got a real Canberra flavour, Josipe. Yeah, we definitely have. Uh, first up, we're going to be speaking with our host and club in focus this week, which is O'Connor Knights, and speaking to some of the committee and coaching technical staff there and hearing what they've been up to and what, the, what they're um, planning for in the future. Yeah, fantastic. And then after that, mate, it's going to be hard to top. In episode two, um, a very, very special guest now, Um He's uh, normally based in Croatia, based in Zagreb, but now with the winter break at the moment, he's managed to uh, come back home to Canberra and we'll be catching up with uh, none other than the legend of the Vatreni um, and the current Croatian under-19 coach, Mr. Josip. Josip Šimunic. Šimunic, yeah, that's going to yeah. be awesome. Uh, we did hear yeah. um, for those fans of our Facebook page earlier today, 
Um, he had a very special message for everyone. And I like the way he said he's made 105 appearances for the Croatia national team. Um, and tonight he's making his first appearance for the Oz Crow soccer scene. The way I read into that, Josipe, is that he's making yeah. his first, but he'll be back again. So we certainly look forward to that. Well, you know, the other thing I looked at is he said yeah. uh, he's made 105 appearances for the Vatrini. Uh-huh. Um but, but he's nervous about tonight. So Yes. <laughs> mate, big, big occasions, right? <laughs> Tell you what. And I, after last week's, even though we had some uh, technical issues last week, uh, the viewers Fingers has crossed. been... Ap- yeah, the number of viewers that we had last week tuning into our YouTube channel, tuning into our Facebook page, was just absolutely astounding. So um, if you haven't... Yeah, thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks for tuning yeah. in. Thank you so much. And th- subscribe to the exclusive Ozcrow Soccer channel on YouTube. Um, uh, last week, if you weren't able, if you're watching the live and there was a few breaks and cuts and what you're not, whatever, um, you were able to watch the whole um, show uninterrupted. It, it was actually um, recorded in two parts. So that was really good. We had uh, Gorse Beach Bears, great club, fantastic club. Um, yeah. Already speaking to some of those guys post the show, they said, they um, got a lot of lot of interest from um, from people who are actually keen on coming out of retirement, having a kick, um, and also yeah. Dandenong City is uh, Mickey Cholina, another legend of the Croatian community in Victoria. Yeah, it was really it was it was it was a, a really good evening for us. I mean, despite the technical yeah. hiccups we had, um, I enjoyed speaking with the Gors- the family from Gorspich Bears, and yeah. uh, I see that they're out there still promoting a couple of uh, available spots in their men's team. So, I'm sure Maxi and uh, and Nicholas Proddy will um will be able to arrange uh, suitable suitable players to fill those couple of spots that they got available. And always a pleasure to speak with Mickey. He's always got so much to offer in conversation. Like always, if you can join us on the um, on the um, on the chat as well, we're already seeing the um, chat is fairly active, and we're attracting all sorts on the chat, and it's good to see a, a really diverse group from all around Australia, um, possibly around the world as well. Um, but yeah, Yossip, you're going to step away for a second while you organise yourself with the news desk just coming up, folks. Remember, subscribe to our exclusive Ozcrow Soccer Channel on YouTube. Um, it, we've, we've only got a few subscribers at the moment, but it is growing each week. Um, we really look forward to having, um, you know, your company throughout this journey that we've started. So, uh, sit, strap yourselves for an awesome show tonight. The first one of those things is our news desk. Welcome to the News Desk, everybody, and uh, episode two's Australia Day uh, theme show. And what a way to start the the News Desk mentions and with uh, Adelaide Croatia paying special recognition to a long time long term member Ante Kilic from Kilic Engineering, recognised in the Order of Australia medal ceremonies today. Congratulations, Ante, and for your tireless support and dedication of all things in the Croatian community. Um, the, the list of work he's put together and support he's provided is endless. So uh, hats off to you and well done to Adelaide Croatia for recognising uh, the gentleman's and his company's contributions over the years. Uh, earlier uh, today, the Croatian Sports Centre, they put a, um, a little sp- social media post in Josipe. And, um, and there on the screen, we can see um, some of the things the man has done, just the service to the Croatian community of South Australia alone, as well as the Adelaide uh, Croatia Raiders, a lot of stuff there. So that's great to see as well. Yeah, wonderful. And whilst we're in South Australia, worth mentioning Adelaide Croatia's kicked off some of their practice matches and had a close affair with Parra Hills going down 3-2. But uh, no doubt, new coach Phil Stubbins from former NSL clubs, Heidelberg and South Melbourne, and former Adelaide United assistant coach, who's now at the helm. He'll be looking to uh, lift, the, lift the boys up and bounce them back uh, into NPL for the following season. So there's a big task at hand, but uh, I'm, I'm sure they're up for the task. Moving uh, along we'll to... Move along. We'll go from yeah. one end of the country to the other. Uh, big news on the Gold Coast. Uh, we've got a big practice match coming up uh, over here against Newcastle Olympic. So uh, all fans from around Gold Coast and Brisbane surrounds, and even if you're just a Croatian in the area and you feel like getting in, getting down to watch the game, the usual Croatian hospitality will be on offer. 2 p.m. kickoff on Saturday, 
So we look forward to that. Uh, Newcastle uh, Olympics, coached by former Socceroo and Newcastle United player uh, Joel Griffiths. So it'll be interesting to see their style of play and how they go about it. They're usually one of the top two or three teams in the region. Yeah. Yep. And then we oh, go right. on to, um, is it? I think it's the Melbourne Knights now going down south. There's lots of news okay. happening now, pre-season. Yep. And um, uh, what's happening at the Knights? At the Knights, we haven't seen much in terms of the on-field action just yet. And no doubt that'll that'll hit off quite soon. And, and information as they do in Melbourne Knights with their social media keep it coming fa- thick and fast. But um, they've released their membership packages. And if... If anyone knows anything about membership packages, it's always a question from people to say, what do I get with it? Well, Melbourne Knights do a fantastic job in their packages, ranging from 60 bucks to $650. And you always get value for money, uh, not just in terms of getting like getting along to seeing some fantastic football and seeing your family and friends in a, in a community environment, but also the merchandise on offer from these guys is always top notch. Mm-hmm. So uh, if, if you just want to get some merch, get yourself a membership, if that's the only reason at all. But... You know what happens. You get your membership over the over the table, and it supports the club for long term. So get in there, put your hand in your pocket, and uh, help the club out. We'll move along to the neighbours in St Albans. Yeah, St Albans. Yeah, St Albans is having their uh, annual car and bike show with the festivities involving Club of Summer Honor, and they're very popular uh, visitors from from over the ditch. You're singing uh, Croatian Club of songs. And the usual hospitality will be on offer there. And the NPL boys will be taking on Moreland Zebras. So plenty of action to take in for the day. And worth a note, too, that the St Albans Dinamo women's team is looking for a couple of players to fill in some positions there as well. So reach out to the club if you're uh, if you're a woman looking for a, a football activity this year. State League 2, get yourself involved. Now, do what the St Albans Saints or St Albans Dinamo have done. They have jumped on board. They will be featured in one of our... Um, upcoming um, clubs in focus segments um, in February. Uh, they have yep. already committed to to helping um, to supporting our show. Last week it was the Gorsbich Bears. This week it's the O'Connor Knights. Folks, get your club involved as well. We've got an announcement later on in the show who our club for next week is. That's already signed, sealed, and delivered, and it's going to be a good one. But uh, in the meantime, if uh, if your club hasn't hasn't reached out to us, we're urging you all to jump on board the Ozcrow Soccer Show concept and um and supporting it but uh mate yep. um on to the west over in the west yeah yeah uh not just yet we've still got a couple of things over in victoria oh, north Geelong. yeah north Geelong had some breaking news last week with young starlets lucas gork or nikki Vladovic <laughs> heading off to croatia so uh as they settle into their new surrounds we'll uh no doubt throughout the season Tonch, uh reach out to them and have a bit of a conversation to see what they're up to and what they what they're looking for in their uh, football journey now and we had, uh, speaking of Geelong, we had Dandy City visit Geelong and had a nice 6-1 win over uh, Geelong Rangers. Uh, the the boys from the MPL outfit had a, a big hitter in uh, hot conditions, so Mickey would be very happy with that 6-1 win to uh, get some form ready for the MPL season. Absolutely. Good good, uh, good um, yeah. hit out against, all right, lowly opposition. It doesn't matter, though. Uh, it's yeah. important to get that confidence up and just to get the, um, get the um, players functioning as a unit, as a team. Uh, mate, lots of news well, happening. What else is going on? Well, let's have, head over to the West and uh, have a uh, quick check-in on Western Knights and Gwellop Croatia. Uh, we know that Gwellop Croatia has uh, started off their night series. The NPLWA night series has, uh, has a quick round-robin session at this time of the year, and they've got none other than Perth Glory Youth to take on this Friday night. So if you're in the area, get yourself out there and support the guys in red, white and blue. And yeah. speaking of the West, West Western Knights, uh, a bit of spotlight this week their way. Uh, their former young junior, Samantha Kerr, uh, you may know of her. <laughs> oh, She's yes, the, Australian yeah. of the Year. Or what is it? No, uh, no. Order of Australian Medal, sorry. Yeah, no, no. Samantha Kerr, named second in the FIFA Best Player Awards uh, this week. Yep. Uh, she's over in India at the moment with the Matildas, and they got off to a massive start with just a um, an uh, easy 18 0 win over Indonesia. And then another 4 four nil win over the Philippines. Uh, and this Friday will be their last group match against Thailand. But uh, also at Western Knights, uh, they've got a big night coming up. Billa Norch, something that they uh, they proudly do on an annual basis. The, the club uh, is hosting it on 26th of February, coming up soon. So um, there's the details on the screen there. Uh, call the contacts, book your tickets in early. Uh, it's be a massive night and they do a great job there. They do indeed. They do indeed. There's a big, there's a big membership drive happening all over the world for Haydook Split. And I think last time, last um, last uh, count, they hit something like thirty thousand members, um, yeah. which is not a bad effort, a pretty good effort. So the guys in Perth will do their bit, no doubt. 
Um, and anything else happening on the Australian Croatian soccer scene? Oh, look, there's. Uh, we'll take the bus and do a big, big turn around the highway up the Princess Highway, and we'll, we are going to be speaking with O'Connor Knights uh, a little bit later. So we'll yep. uh, we'll catch up with them on their on their latest and greatest news, but also Canberra Croatia's um, getting themselves ready for a for a big season and um, something that they. Um, that they do really well in Canberra is their women's football and mm-hmm. their women's team is up top of the pops as well, just like their men's are. Um, so we'll be looking forward to seeing what, uh, what action is coming their way. Um, mind you, I know we'll talk about this a little bit more with O'Connor, but what a massive round one for Canberra, Croatia and O'Connor. The oh, big derby. Yep. O'Connor's back in the NPL in the big time and round one derby. Uh, what better way to kick off a season, right? Oh, absolutely. And we will be speaking to the president, Steve Radic. We will be speaking to the technical director, Alex Trninic. And also we will be talking to Niko Kresic, who's a, who's a young fella, but he's a, he's part of the leadership group there at the O'Connor Knights. And, uh, and then immediately after that, we'll be talking with um, our, our very special guest tonight, Canberra-born Josip Šimunic, former yep. Socceroo legend. Uh, heaps to get through. And we heaps haven't even to touched the, uh, yeah, the stuff yeah. in Croatia. That's right. Just a couple more things over uh, as we get out of Canberra and we head up the whole way into into Sydney. We know that Sydney United late last year announced a big uh, coaching coup with uh, with young uh, with Joe Haywood coming over, and then Joe Haywood comes with a list of experience for Man City, Man United, and Blackburn Rovers youth setups. And we know that Sydney United is really massive on their youth setup, so um, I'm I'm sure that'll be a great acquisition for them as they make their journey through the NPL season coming their way. And speaking of Sydney United, we'll uh, find an opportunity to speak with um, uh, their neighbours, King Tom, about the progress that they're doing for the annual Croatian soccer tournament, which oh, we're we'll looking be good. forward to. Yeah. yeah, and we'll hear the, hear how they're going around their plans. And um, look, we know that COVID's buggered us up for the last couple of years. So, you know, <laughs> fingers crossed forever. and God, God willing, we don't get any of those issues this year. And we were looking forward to getting that back in, back on track. Speaking of Sydney, um, their neighbours down the Princess Highway, Hurstville Zagreb's put a massive call out at the end of last year and continuing this year to support a, a big, big major de- development, the Jubilee Stadium. And people might think, why would they be promoting Jubilee Stadium? But the onflow activity from building the work at Jubilee Stadium will flow into the southwest corridor where uh, Hurstville Zagreb has been, you know, denied opportunities to build their own facilities mm-hmm. and infrastructure, right? So if people, we'll, we'll put that link up after the episode tonight, um, get on board, support that change, and um, you know, we'll see some good things happen for Hurstville Zagreb. Brilliant, brilliant. And before we wrap things up, let's wrap it up in the Hunter, Newcastle. Well, we can call them the newest club to the Federation, but they have been around since 92. Reintroduced this year, and um, good news is their sponsors are coming on thick and fast, and I'm delighted for them all. Not just because I spent a couple of years down there, up there, whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah. Um, but it's just wonderful to see the community coming together the way it has. Um, I, I still have contact with an old mate, Carl Zivkovic, over there, and um, you know, it keeps me up to date with how things are going. But it's it's just a delight to see that uh, people coming together and keeping the spirit alive within the community. Yeah. And their uh, Division Three season will kick off, no doubt, soon. But seeing the amount of sponsors they're attracting uh, yeah. is just a delight. And look, it's a second generation on, on today on Australia Day when we kind of uh, – um, oh, parts of Australia anyway acknowledge the, um, the, the, the contribution that migrants made to this country. Um, it was our parents that came to this country, though, the trailblazers um, in many situations. In, in fact, in all situations, they founded the Croatian soccer clubs all around Australia. Um, it's great to see the second generation getting involved and now the, even the third generation as well. Um, and, and look, you know, it's something we're talking off air with some of the blokes coming up um, shortly. But um, like it or not, football, soccer seems to be one of the the few things, the few instruments that's keeping the, the community alive. Um, yeah. all, all the other things seem to be, unfortunately, kind of waning a bit. Um, but look, look, we're going to take a little bit of a break, um, bearing that in mind. After after a couple of words from our sponsors, uh, Josip, we'll then hear how things are going up in the nation's capital how things are going up with, uh, well, we talk about um, the, the newest Croatian club, but this newest Croatian club to the NPL uh, fraternity, O'Connor Knights, who have been prom- promoted uh, to NPL 1 in the ACT. That'll be coming up very, very shortly. So, uh, folks, don't go away. Um, we, we're just getting started, and towards the end of the show, we'll even have a little bit of a Croatian roundup as well. So don't go away. 
next uh, the other side of the break it's all about the um it's all about the O'Connor Knights. Requires effort, sweat and strong will, and Macron knows it. A leading global company with the Italian DNA in the production and sale of sportswear, when Macron first entered the sports world in 1971, he was a small yet strong player. Since then, Macron has been growing at a very fast pace, supporting teams, sportsmen and women at all levels, working hard to supply them with the best technical products to help improve their performances. With over 4 million pieces of stock available in our Italian warehouse, including an extensive range of on-field, off-field and free-time products, we cater for everyone from amateurs to professional sporting organisations. Ranked third most prominent football brand by UEFA, Macron keeps expanding its presence worldwide and now even includes Croatian giants Hajduk Split, Hainel Prva Liga outfit MK Šibenik, as well as Melbourne-based Croatian community club NK Bunker, amongst its ever-growing international family. And there are more to come. Work hard, play harder, Macron, your next teamwear partner. For more information, visit our website at www.macronvic.com.au or call us now on 1-800-MACRON. Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It's only episode two, but it is going to be a massive, massive episode tonight. And uh, we are so excited because our very next guest is the president of the O'Connor Knights. And uh, it's, it's, it's only fair that we bring him on, Steve, uh, Steve Radic. Steve, how are you? And welcome to the show. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having us. Hey, Steve. How you going, mate? Good, now, good. mate. Mate, let's talk about the O'Connor Knights. It's um, the 25th year anniversary. So um, for those that probably aren't so familiar with the club, and you, you've you been there from, from, from day dot, you've been there right from the start. Mate, tell us a bit about the O'Connor story. Oh, the O'Connor story uh, started back in uh, <laughs> 96, 97 was <clears throat> when we were founded. Uh, guys like us who are sort of... Um, uh, gave up our spots at, at, at the Canberra Croatia Club at Deakin and we're getting a bit older and uh, decided to start up a bit of a state league team and uh, carry on playing football in Canberra. So we uh, started off the uh, Connor Knights in um, 97. Um, we found ourselves, you know, attracting more players, young players, you know, winning the comps and stuff like that in the state leagues and eventually got uh, promoted. We were in the MPL in, back in uh, 2004 and were there for six seasons. And then um, eventually uh, Capital Football decided to do an overhaul of the, of the system. Us, we were always um, mid to top of table, you know, in the top four. And us and Juventus were ousted out of the league in uh, 2009. Yeah. Which sort of uh, nearly depleted us, but uh, yeah, we struggled on. You know, stayed up. We still had a few old boys coming up playing state leagues and stuff like that. And um, about uh, five years ago, Miro and Alex Tunich, our technical director now, um, sort of approached us boys in the committee, the little the little that was left of us, and decided and we decided to uh, bring back the club if we, you know try to promote the club and get back into the Premier Leagues and and go with the juniors. And, yeah, here we are today, back in the Premier League after, well, it's been 12 years. So, yeah. So it's fantastic. It's a, a big story. Hey, Steve, Steve uh, it, thanks for that little uh, journey and history, history lesson for us there. When you, when you look back at the numbers compared to, say, that, that period just before you sort of uh, dipped out of the Premier Leagues or the, the highest league at the time and now where you are, what are the playing levels like? Are, are there, you know, 100, 200, 300? How many players are, are, are connected to O'Connor at the moment? And, and what was it like well, prior to that dip? Well, well, prior, well, prior to that, us being in the Premier League, we didn't have uh, juniors. It was just our uh, first grade in our reserve okay. grade. Yep. Um, Capital Football sort of used that as a reason to get yeah. rid of us and Juventus 
criteria? Um, yeah, that was well. They didn't really have a criteria like probably you other states have. They just yeah, I decided to do an overhaul of the system and yeah. So we were, other clubs were introduced like uh, Kuma and Goulburn and uh, yeah. sort of Goulburn in in the league for about a year and they left because you know just weren't that uh, no, weren't competitive enough. Yeah. So saying that we rebuilt. Like I said, if it wasn't for um, Miro Trinic and Alex Trinic approaching us, and uh, we just rebuilt, um, told Miro it was going to be an easy road, you know, trying to get back players, gather in players, trying to build the momentum and get the wheels rolling again. And <clears throat> we found ourselves, you know, five years later with a strong first grade team. Um, We've got our first grade reserves. We've got uh, in our uh, we've got in our CPLs. We've got our 18s, 16s, 13s, and 14s, and then we've got all the way down to our juniors from our sixes up to the under 12s. Oh, so, so, so the clubs the clubs gone from you know 40 odd players to like you know a couple of hundred players. Yeah, and, it's and a lot with, of work, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, with that growth, with that growth, Steve. Like, obviously, I mean, it's it's such an exponential growth in such a short time, um, and and that transformation um, obviously means a lot more work for the committee for yourself as president. Um, has has that also meant a lot of new faces, parents jumping on board, um, people that probably weren't involved in the in the in the soccer community before coming on board? Um, have how how is the sort of the the number of volunteers and committee members has that expanded accordingly? Um, with the uh, committee members, we've sort of had the same committee. It hasn't really expanded in that that sense. Um, saying that like we've all handled our roles and just sort of expanded of course it's sort of come in the last couple of years mm -hmm. we haven't had time to sort of grow a committee or get extra committee members but we've had saying that we've had had heaps of help and heaps of parents offer to help out on game days you know if someone cooks you one barbecue at the end of the day it's good so yeah you know, yeah. any uh, helps welcome any help any helps good help you know um you know, from the club supporting us, uh, uh, you know, Australian Croatian O'Connor Club. So we're always back there for a few drinks. They support us and obviously we're part of them. And, yeah, um, yeah so, uh, we've, it's been a journey for us and a learning curve as well with, uh, you know, letting other people in and, and evolving. So it'll take yeah. time, but it's all getting there and we seem mm -hmm. to be on the right track. As we grow, we'll have to uh, uh, attract more committee members and more uh, and more, um, yeah, members and staff. Yeah. Look, it's always it's always a difficult task um, trying to uh, get people on board because there's always that um, that that the perception and that belief that once I'm in, I'm never going to be able to get out of it. It's too much work. I'm I'm busy. Everyone. End of the day, we're all busy, right? So let, let's just put that mm -hmm. on the table now and wipe it away because we all we're all busy and we all got things to do. However, I think I think a, a good one a good one for everyone to take on board is. Uh, if you can just get someone like you said, one barbecue, uh, even if it's just one one raffle book, and you go around through the crowd and sell one raffle book, any step, any little contribution, I'm sure, Steve, you and the team would be first up there to help people understand how to do the work and guide them through it. Yeah, we got we got a small committee of five of us. We all lead by example, and then all the boys, you know, they follow on. If 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 we ask, you know, from our you know, from our first grade to our reserve grade to our mm -hmm. teens and that, if we delegate some work to them, they're all willing to jump on, give us yeah. a hand because, you know, at the end of the day, we're there for them. Like I tell them, and like you just said then, you know, time, you know, we it's not an excuse, you know. it's Everyone's got time. It's just about if you want to put in, if you can put in a little bit, it yeah. makes a, you know, difference. Yeah. Now, mate, down here in Victoria, we've, we're lucky to have three Croatian-backed clubs in the NPL, in the top tier of the NPL, and then a fourth one, um, North Geelong, in the in the second tier, so NPL two. And I'm 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 of the firm belief the more the merrier. I think that the more Croatian clubs who are aiming for for that elite status, the more that are playing at the highest possible standard, the better. Um, in Canberra now, um, or in the ACT, we're lucky now that we've got two Croatian-backed clubs. It's great to see. Um, round one, the big Croatian derby. Yeah, after, what a way to start the year. 10 years um, of, of waiting, or maybe even more, actually, 13. Um, what a way to, 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 to herald your comeback to the to the big time. 
um, a, a, a game against the big brother or big sister, Kakogodni Tokajimo. Um, yeah. Mate, what, what's, what's as a president of, of the O'Connor Knights, it's your home game. What are you really looking forward to come? Uh, is it Saturday, March the 19th? Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, Saturday, March 19th. Yeah, it's a big day. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be great for the Croatian community down here in our Canberra. It's yep. good to have both Croatian clubs in the National Premier League in Canberra here, you know, like Malonas, Ima. But there's, it's good to have two of us in the league. You've got other, you know, nationalities who don't have, like, clubs in the league yeah. or, yeah, you know, so we're strong. You know, we're united. We're, we're all good friends on both sides of the pitch or, you know. So, you know, there's a bit of always friendly rivalry. It'll, it'll always be a bit of rivalry. But at the end of the day, you know, yeah. we're going to make a big fest. There will be a big day. We'll get together at the end of it and go back to the club at O'Connor. And, you know, there'll be a few yanks and a few few pigs on the spit and, and a bit of and a few drinks and from, yeah. you know, go on from but it's it's um it's exciting it's good it's good to have two croatian clubs in the mpl and you know i'm excited to see what it's going to bring like like i said it's always good to have a bit of rivalry and there'll always be that bit of rivalry but yeah that's no that's sport that's sport as long as there's no harm and it's all in good all in good faith because that's you all right. support each other it's good uh, look, Stipe, before we before we uh, let you go and, and bring in Alex to have a chat to him about the uh, the technical development in the in the club, um, is there anything you'd like to say to your members, your sponsors, your committee people? Uh, just a, a big message before you, your season gets underway in the, in about four or five weeks' time. Yeah, well, I'd like to thank you guys for having us on. Um, I'd also, you know, just like to thank our sponsors. Um, we've got the like the Australian Creation Club. Tony Sepp there and the committee who do a lot of work um, and help us out regarding, you know, from barbecues to Zaba and stuff like that. You know, uh, Tomislav Shimonich from Empire Building Group, um, Kovac Interiors. Uh, we got Mirko Milic from Canberra Toyota. You know, uh, also, also we got uh, Robert Skrinjogem Homes, Vinko Gutel from Mink, Kitchen, Mink Kitchens. Shima Paransin from Simco Painting, Yuri Gulbich, Tony Polak from uh, Phase 4, Steve and Ante Nazel from Market Body Repairs, Yossi um, Palekic, Dream Property Group, Steve Perezo, Steve Pemushi as well from High Groves, um, Ante, and, uh, Ante Radic and um, Andrea Rakic from RNR Building, Don Gulbich AIS, and uh, Lars Shalebia, Bosna Constructions, Johnny from Abel um, Landscaping, Mariko from uh, six, uh, Studio 66. Dion from now, I've got to stop you there. I've got to stop you there. Marinko Markovic, I actually know. Now, I haven't met, seen the guy in about 30 years. I think the last time we saw him was up in Sydney, but I believe now he's relocated to Canberra because of you, Bav. Um, yeah. So, big, big shout out to uh, Marinko there. Good on you, mate. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He does all our web design and our new, um, you all our stuff to do with our web packages and designs yeah, right. and photos. So I reckon we, tip, we might need a, a website uh, done up for the Ozcro Soccer Show. We know, we know where to go. We know who to go to. <laughs> and, and finally, myself and my partner, Nicholas Sportrich, as well, uh, sponsors as well of the club. Yeah, yeah. Just a final thing before I go. Um, um, we've got a GoFundMe page going on for the Australian Creation Club at O'Connor there. It's our home base. We're doing up the upstairs. There's a bit of water damage and stuff like that. So we've had a bit of a grant from the government, but we have to also put in ourselves. And if if anyone's willing to con contribute a little bit, whatever they can, it, you know, it all helps. If they can just go on the you know Australian Creation Club webpage or on our Facebook page, and any help is uh, gratefully appreciated. Awesome. Pretzenicha, yeah. thank you so much for that. Really, really appreciate it. And wishing you Excellent and everyone time, at the Knights all the absolute very best for season 2022 and beyond. Yeah, thanks, boys. Uh, thanks for having us on and all the best. Good on you. Thank you. We'll speak soon, Okay. Mate. Steve Radic, um, the president of O'Connor Knights, a genuinely nice bloke. And apparently he's, um, he's uh, 
up your neck of the woods holidaying or something. So you might run into him down at a, I don't know, Broadbeach oh, Mall. If he's around Saturday, Stip, if you're still listening, <laughs> Saturday, come and let's have a Chavapi roll at Gold Coast Nights on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, Tom, was yeah. Um, now, moving along very much at a breakneck speed, our next guest is uh, the man who set this up. He, he, he was the one that kind of approached us, was willing, was interested in the club um, coming on board. And um and being featured in our club in focus, Alex Trindinic. Alex, a big, big welcome to welcome. the Oscar Soccer Show. Dobro večer i lijepi pozdrav svim Hrvaticama i Hrvatima dijelom Australije. I just want to congratulate you on setting up this show. Love it. Soccer try to cover all the Australian Croatian soccer clubs around Australia. So it's a good initiative to compliment Melbourne Knights as uh, night train. And just a quick shout out to their host, um, Anthony Zovak, and his big Herzegovačka glava. <laughs> <laughs> big Zovak, the big Zovak. If you're if you're if you're uh, tuning in, mate, uh, drop us a comment in the uh, comment section. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to that. Actually, it should be a should be a big year. But uh, um, we spoke to Steve um, Radish just moments ago, and and um, he was telling us, yeah, just the, the whole O'Connor night story and. Um, he had a lot of lot of uh, uh, as we say in Croatian, a lot of praise for for you and Miro, your dad, um, coming over to the club in 2015, mate. When you first came over, how bad was the situation? Was the club like you know literally on its knees or figure? Uh, we came over in 2017, and um, yes, sorry to correct you there, but yeah, the club was um, it wasn't in good shape at the time. Um, there was three, four clubs and roughly about sorry three, four teams. And roughly around 60 players we've grown to 22 teams and around 250 players in the last four years magnificent well done so we've set up a complete junior pathway from under six where my son plays all the way up through the age groups and um into the cpl youth which is the second tier of the of the youth boys competition here in canberra and obviously our first grade has been promoted in our second attempt since promotion and relegation was introduced. Um, in our first attempt, they unfortunately called the season off after seven games mm. due to COVID and all that. But yeah, we've grown we've grown at a rapid rate over the last um, four years. And obviously, Miro had a vision um, how he wanted the club to progress and you know to establish a proper proper club. And the committee, which I joined um, in the second year. Um, was more than willing to go with and we all pushed in the same direction and we're just seeing the fruition of our works now and hopefully you know we can um have some even better success in the coming future fantastic alex uh with that with that role that you have at the club um a lot of pe pe people think technical director uh, is sort of the be all and end all of everything sometimes you're the uh, big child care monitor other times you're the parent monitor how, how have you found the role? What have you what have you found to be the biggest challenge for you in terms of taking this journey on and then growing the numbers as you go as well? Well, to be quite honest, the biggest um, challenge that that we faced was gaining gaining entry into the competition. We NPL we, is that? Yeah, yeah, NPL. At the time, there was only one NPL youth competition, mm -hmm. and we. We approached Capital Football. They didn't have a selection criteria at the time of what you needed to fulfill to get in. We approached them. We said to them, we want to establish that's what we want to do. That at the time, there was only 13 clubs in the competition. We wanted to fill that 14th spot. Unfortunately, we had some detractors, clubs that we consider our sister clubs were publicly supporting us, but behind our back, they were um, gathering the troops to go against us, which is disappointing. But unfortunately for us, and um, when the Hrvatski Inat kicked in, once we got rejected, twice we got rejected. On the third time, we approached Tomislav Šimunić, who's a platinum sponsor, and his lawyer, uh, John Irvine from Trinity Law, and we fought this all the way to the end. We wanted what we wanted, and we finally achieved it. In our first, um, first season, which was last year, we finished third on the club championship ladder, and so far, it's smooth cruising. The probably the hardest part about managing youth is parents. So otherwise, everything else ah. is. Fine. <laughs> I think that's a universal problem, oh, isn't it? Yeah. How unusual! <laughs> and, but but now that we talk about parents and we talk about obviously the juniors that were that were uh, had to be set up, um, the, the entire infrastructure. 
Did you oversee that or did you have people helping you? Like, did you have, say, for example, a junior director, a women's football director, a senior men's football director, or did you have to kind of oversee and implement everything? We started from complete scratch. We did not have one single junior at the club. But, of course, to, to be successful, you need to employ capable people. And I'm quite happy to say that out of, 11, uh, sorry, out of 14 youth and senior coaches, 11 Sunashi, Hrvati. So it's good to have good people Excellent. around you that are all yeah. pushing in the right direction. Yep. <laughs> and without these people that dedicate their time in volunteer roles, it's not possible. But of course, we, we're all united in that front. We all have the same targets. And yeah, look, we, we're growing. We're growing at a rapid rate and it's going to get better for us. And how, how are you managing with those numbers in the increase in numbers? How are you managing with fields? Are you have you got good support from council, or have you have you got some uh, other other opportunities coming your way in terms of fields? We've got um at O'Connor, there's six fields there, um, four with lights, but in Canberra it's a bit different than it is all over Australia. It's um the council or the government here owns the fields, and anyone can go rent them. So we've got um. Yeah. We're um, primary users of, let's say, O'Connor, and then we've got preference over those fields. But, yeah, so we've got four fields and we make it work with um, all our teams. So we all um, all um, fit into that into that area and our home ground is just next door, so it's separated by a fence. But, yeah, look, it's something that um, all Canberra, most Canberra clubs besides one or two that struggle with that. But, yeah, we might just make do with what we've got and get the best out of it. Mate, Excellent. let's move along to the uh, senior team. And um, we're going to see some footage now of um, the senior team from last year. So um, a, a huge achievement, winning um, NPL 2, moving up in, into NPL 1. Uh, mate, tell us, tell us a little bit about the senior team. Um, who were some of the standout players that you're expecting big things from them um, in, in season 2022? Who's left and who have you signed um, for the new season? Yeah, well, the senior team um, is obviously uh, coached by my father, Miroslav, and um, I'm, I'm helping him there alongside Nick Tyver. We're coaching the team. Majority of our core, like Nico Kresic, who'll be on soon, um, Jack Miller, goalkeeper, these are, these are players that um, have been with us for three, four years now. Um, we've actually had a bit of a change with the personnel Obviously, when you step up, we had to replace some of the older guys like club talisman Robert Hristic, who is 36 years old, with some of the younger boys. And we've gained some about um, four or five senior players that have got a combined 300, 400 MPL one games. So we've got a great mix at the moment happening with the players. And I believe... Who, who are some be... of those new players, the new recruits? So some of the new recruits are Michael Kitta, Michael Adams, um, Regan Walsh, and Andrea Slavic, um, uh, Kogan, um, Ayu, uh, Garang, so Noah Steinacker, these are the young, young, talented players, Noah Steinacker, uh, Connor Minnett Smith, uh, Ryan Zanata, and Seb Aran. So we've got yep. 12 new players, we've, um, we've got rid of nine, so we've got a yeah, good squad of 22 solid boys, and we'll, we'll be ready for round one against Canberra Deacon. Has the team played any pr um, practice games or anything like that so far? I know it is probably very, very early in the preseason, but uh, I suppose what two months to go before the season starts. Uh, has there been any 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 opportunity for these younger for these new players to sort of start blending in with the um, with the other players? Yeah. So before Christmas, we before we broke up before Christmas, we had two two friendly games against NPL fellow NPL one sides. Uh, we've got another five potentially six games plus a early ffa cup game all before round one so there'll be plenty of time and plenty of um sessions and games to you know get the, the team gelling and with miro and nick and myself you know in charge with these boys we're quite confident that we can get them up to a you know level and standard of football that we can be proud of and present the best version of ourselves yossi pep I uh, know, Alex. Uh, in, with in regards to the uh, the seniors, we, we know you're taking on in round one uh, Canberra Deacon. But in terms of the juniors, when does their when does their calendar year kick in? At the same time, or are they running at a different beat? Same time, but uh, what we've done is for our home matches, 
We've got two fields that are kind of enclosed, which is our um, uh, match day fields, as you can say. Mm -hmm. They'll be playing at the same time in all our home games. So we're creating a party atmosphere where, you know, oh, yeah. the under 13 oh, all the way up to first grade, everyone will big be there. Big gala day. Yeah, yeah, big gala day. So we've got yeah. 10, 10 out of 21 uh, games are home games and we'll be having, you know, all our six teams playing on the one day, which will create, you know, a good celebration of our Croatian community and get as many people as possible together and celebrate what we have achieved and, but yeah, to have two out of eight uh, clubs that are of Croatian descent is always great. So we're looking yeah. forward to it. Alex, just hang yeah. on there. Uh, don't go away. We're going to bring on Niko Kresic now as well. So there's Niko. Niko, welcome to the show. Yeah, How mate. are you? Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be on here for the inaugural season. Um, like Alex said, I think it's a great initiative you guys have taken. Um, so well done. Yeah, now Thanks, it's a pleasure Nicole. having you on, Nico. But before we before we uh, um, talk to you, um, Alex, one last question: How you know crowd figures? I know we love talking about numbers and that sort of stuff. Um, what sort of a crowd figure would you be happy with? Um, you know, I'm not sure too much by by ACT standards. But for that first game, let's really pump it up. How many ho how many are we hoping to get to the first game? Oh, look, realistically, um, Canberra crowds are. Not that high, but we're hoping to get around the 500 mark. I think oh. that'll be a successful day for us. We will also have our where my daughter dances, uh, uh, HKUD Stepinats, who will be um, performing Kolo and we'll be having music. And um, yeah, we'll make it a real celebration of our Croatian community here in Canberra. So we're hoping to crack around 500, yeah. Awesome, uh, mate. Hear, well, man. thank you very much for joining us. Now that we've said that and we're pushing it, I want to see nothing less than 750. Uh, 50 yeah, get out there, everyone. Out get out so there. all you Canberrans, all you ACTians, and uh, even for the people in Sydney, it's just a nice little short trip down the highway. Couple so, hours. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's not too bad. Uh, Alex, once again, thank you very much for, one, um, teeing this all up, and two, um, being a part of our show. Well, yeah, Paul Bog. And post it up to your dad. He's always a nice, nice gentleman at the tournaments when I see him and I bump into him. So all the best to him. No problem. Well, good on you, Alex. Uh, Alex Tudinic from the O'Connor Knights, and uh, now we've got Nico all to himself. Nico, you're a, you look like a very young fella. You'd be what 18, 19, Is that right? <laughs> no, maybe face the assassin. Everyone's 18, 18, 19 to us, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Twenty five. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But mate, that's you're part of the leadership group, and now look, you know, that's you're still a young fella, young player, still learning the ropes. But um, you've obviously got a very mature head on your shoulders um, to be part of the leadership group. Um, uh, tell us about the dressing room at at, at the nights. Um, um, Alex told us how you know twelve players have been recruited, nine have left, so it's going to be quite a different type of a a dressing room, a different dynamic. But uh. Tell us, you know, what, what's what's the mood like ahead of the, the new ACT NPL season? Yeah, we've always had good banter in the dressing room and in the group chat the last couple of seasons. Um, hopefully that continues now with the new players that we've brought in. Um, but, yeah, everyone's obviously upbeat about being promoted this year. That's what we were striving for last year. And even at the start of the season before, before it got um, rendered null and void because of COVID, so it's good to finally be in back in the NPL one. Uh, for me personally, I used to play for Canberra Croatia back when they were called mm -hmm. Canberra FC as a junior and uh, in in the seniors for a couple of years. So it'd be good to be back in the in the NPL one. A lot of our players actually have played there before, um, so it'll be nothing new to us. Same as usual. Mm. Uh, it's good to hear. And now from, from the season's expectations with the, some of the new new players coming on board, I, I anticipate through the enthusiasm that Alex was talking about that we're expecting some big things here and making a big impact in your return to the Premier League. Uh, from your own expectations, what do, you what do you feel like is a realistic expectation? Yeah, obviously we don't want to get relegated. It'd be a shame... Um coming back to the Premier uh, MPL one uh, getting promoted last year, it'd be a shame if we went back straight back down um, next year. But in terms of our real goal and our real aim, it's to make the top four. Um, one of our other assistant coaches, Nick Tiller, put it well last night at training. He said, if we set the bar for top four and if we happen to miss out just, then we're definitely going to avoid relegation. So there's no point being negative and setting our goal to not get relegated. We may as well set the bar high 
And then if it doesn't happen, then we'll still have a decent season. So definitely top four. Now, um, the standard, what's the standard like the difference between NPL 2 and NPL 1? For a lot of around Australia where they do have multiple NPL divisions, it, it seems to be quite a, quite a big jump. I know down in Victoria, every time an NPL 2 team gets promoted to NPL Victoria, um, they, they struggle and often find themselves either getting relegated immediately or um, languishing down near the bottom. Uh, what is what is the difference between standard there in, in, in the ACT and uh, how confident are you of, of being able to survive in that first season? I think the biggest difference um, in Canberra is that there's no bad teams uh, in the NPL 1, mm -hmm. uh, whereas in the NPL 2, there's, to be honest, there's a few games that we go in and we're expected to win, uh, whereas in the NPL 1, every game is going to be tough, so we can't underestimate any opponent. Um, there's no easy games. There's no freebies. Um, so, yeah, the, the quality on average is a lot higher uh, in the NPL 1, and the intensity and the speed of the game is much, much faster. Um, and it was in, in saying that too, and, and you know, a, a season is a long time. Uh, when you look at it on the on black and white, it looks like it'll be a quick journey. But we all know too well that uh, if you start winning, it starts to go a little too fast. If you start having a few defeats, it starts to drag on. The the wins, the losses, the suspensions, the injuries will come. In terms of depth, with these new players that have come on board, and if you look into your, is it under twenty threes or twenty ones in Canberra? Twenty three. You know. Yeah. 23. So when you look into the youth stock and the skill and talent level there, do you feel like there's the confidence level that someone can jump up and, and do a job in case there's some long-term injury or suspension that, heaven forbid, comes your way? Uh, to be honest, our 23s um, is pretty much a brand new squad from last year. But the ones that have trained with us so far, they've been amazing. And I think a few of them will actually stay as part of the first team uh, throughout the whole year. So, yeah, I'm That's confident. Yeah. Yeah, if, if we happen to be unfortunate, get injuries or suspensions, I'm sure there'll be players to step up. Yeah, well, yeah, def you definitely need it. And any any club that's uh, worth its worth its weight in gold is uh, like Canberra, like O'Connor is. Um, we'll be making sure that that uh, youth development pathway exists and enables enables young players to come through and start knocking on the door for those opportunities. It's really good to hear. Nico, thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. We are running out of time because we've got another Canberran coming on, a very, very big name, Josip Shimunic, who's, uh, whose brother, by the way, is, is, is uh, Tommy, Tommy Slav, the, um, the, the main sponsor there at O'Connor Knights. So very strong connection to the O'Connor Knights. Mate, we wish you all the best. We wish all the boys all the very best. And uh, hopefully we'll get you guys a little bit later on in the year um, just to, to chart your progress and uh, – um, like, like I said, um, we wish you absolutely all the very best for season 2022. Thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah, it. Thanks for having all the me. best, mate. We'll be looking out for the uh, NPL live uh, broadcast for that round one derby and, and all the action that comes with it. Yeah, please do. Thank you. Good, Good on you, mate. Bye. Good on you. Nico Kresic from the um, O'Connor Knights. And speaking of those live broadcasts, how good are they, mate? Um, it's just great that you you can practically spend your entire weekend locked up in your study or on the TV watching um, um, watching NPL from around the country. Technology has really come a long way in the last two, well, three years. I'll tell you what, Tonch, if, if Paramount Plus is anything to go by, you and I are set for a very long, <laughs> very long career behind the microphone. Oh, we I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone else agrees with that um, that observation by Mr. Zielic, pop it down in the comments. Um, I, I have, haven't been very impressed at all. I haven't seen anything that bad oh, for geez. a very long time, mate. And I, you know what? If I compare that with some of the with some of the footage and, and the wind blowing in the microphones during NPR oh. broadcasts, give me that any day because it's real. Yeah, not that not that crap. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, special comments by Josip Zielic. Um, guys, <laughs> we're going to take a little bit of a break. When we do return, um, we'll be talking to the man who has um, has really made an international name of himself, um, and he continues to do so as the coach of the Croatian national under under nineteen team. He um, and he's also made one hundred and five appearances for the Croatian national team. But tonight, he makes his first appearance on the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Josip Shimunic, he'll be joining us very shortly after the break. Um, don't go away, away folks. Um, we're looking forward to that interview.
Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It is episode two, and um, big shout out to our sponsors, um, our business sponsors tonight's episode, um, Macron Victoria, and also to Pleme, the app that is keeping the Croatian community together, and indeed our episode sponsor for tonight, the O'Connor Knights from Canberra. Now, Josipe, before we go, get to our guest, he's itching, he's, he's, he's just waiting to get in. We, got, um, we didn't get a chance to really cover what's happening in Croatia this weekend, but the high NL, the Prva Hrvatska Nogometna Liga, returns this weekend. Um, it's going to be uh, it's, 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 talk about exciting times. One of the most exciting seasons on record. Um, and there we go. We've got the um, ladder. Take us through some of the stuff that's happening on this weekend. We lost Yosif. Oh, yep, oh, we lost you there going. for a sec. I think we just muted. Sorry, uh, had you muted? Yeah, yeah. So the the high NL. What's coming up this week? Uh, we'll go through maybe some of the um, fixtures that are coming up as well. Um, yep. Oh, I think I've lost it. Have I? Have I lost it? Oh no, that's not good. Um, we'll bring the ladder up and just quickly go through the ladder um, while we go through the. Um, the the things have, is coming up. Yep, things have really have tightened up, and uh, since the since the break, we've uh, at, at the time of the break, we've seen that the ladder's really congested up there, especially the top four spots. Dinamo's worked its way back up to the top with the game in hand. The Eka and Osiak have uh, sort of stumbled a little bit and gained a couple of draws just before the Christmas break, and Hay looks held its ground in, in that fourth position. Um, this weekend, we we see uh, Ista at home taking on Gordica, um, and. Osiek at home taken on Slavin Balupa. Now, that could, that could be a little bit tricky. As we know, Slavin Balupa can be uh, one of those sort of prickly sides that can upset can upset a team. Um, down on the coast, there's a bit of a derby happening. We should be taking on Hayduk Split in the uh, Macron Cup, we'll call it. Mm. With the, both teams uh, yes. kitted out by our show sponsors for this week is uh, um, Macron. Uh, but a massive match coming up for Dinamo Zagreb, taken on Rijeka, uh, which can which will start to probably um, determine whether or not they yeah. they charge forward or whether the Eka starts to make an impact in there as well. Um, That's the big news I this week with Dinamo, um, comings and goings, but put Petar Bochke signed from Osiek in the uh, winter break, but there's talk of a big transfer um, making his exit from the Maximir. Who was that? Sorry, mate. I, I did lose you just for two seconds there. Yeah, you got me there. Yep. Uh, so we're, we're talking about the big news in recent days about a, a possible departure from Dinamo Zagreb, bound for the EPL. Oh, Mislav, Mislav Orsic. Uh, yeah. the, the big uh, story coming out, coming out in the last 24 hours is that uh, Burnley FC is looking to acquire themselves Mislav Orsic, um, in rumoured to be around the $10 million mark. So uh, it, that should be um, consolidating the news over, overnight, but we look forward to hearing the news um, coming out. Yeah, and um, a, a, another another big name big name signing during the week for NK Osiek um, Mio Taktash, the ex Hayduk captain. Um, he was he's been signed as a free agent now. I think he was out in the sort of into the at, at somewhere in the Middle East. Um, he's being paid by his club, a Saudi club, I think, to twenty twenty three. So money's not an issue here. He he has now signed at Osiek. Um, Osiek's ex Hayduk or former Hayduk contingency is growing now. Um, yep. And look, they've they've lost a player like uh, Petar Bochka, who was uh, very attacking, very on the left. But they've gained a player who could be OCX version of, of Marco Livaya, the Hayduk um, spearhead. And that was one of the problems, I guess, with um, with uh, OCX in that first part of the season. If we bring the ladder back up, they haven't scored that many goals. Um, we don't have the. We've just got the goal difference there. But look. Uh, they've got a goal difference of plus 15 compared to Dinamo's plus 26. Um, and I think they've only scored something like 25 goals. So um, they really need help in the um, in the striking department. Saktash could be that 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 solution, uh, Yossi. Yeah, it was a, he was a little bit of an X factor when he was at Hayduk. So maybe he can yeah. bring that to the table now for Osiek. Yeah, so that's going to be um, something to really, really look forward to. Now, I'm probably finishing it off on a not-so-good note. Um, earlier this morning in the second match of the uh, first round at the Euro 22 Futsal um, Championships, uh, Croatia went down to uh, Russia 4-0. 
um, not exactly the, the the result that that we wanted um, um, in the other game. Um, yep. Slovakia and Poland drew two two. So that if in effect means that now after two games, Russia are on top with uh, six points from two games. Croatia, uh, by virtue of their win over Poland, are in second spot. Now they take on Slovakia. Um, I think it's on Sunday morning, if I'm not mistaken, um, in in, the, in their last um, last group game. They just need a draw, basically. Oh well, yeah, they need they a do win. because they look, do oh, they need a draw. A draw's fine because head to head they've yeah. beaten Poland, so they'll go through. Yeah, yeah, and Poland would really need to defeat Russia and and and, and you know have a really good day out. Russia looking very yeah. good. I watched parts of that game. Very very tough. Um, so Croatia still got a chance to get through to the second round, um, but they do need a good result against Slovakia coming up on on the weekend, mate. That's yeah. that pretty much I think. Oh, before we go, there is one other thing as far as the high and L. Um, this guy has got the best name, absolutely the best name, Tonchi Kukoc. He sort of <laughs> sounds like he should be playing basketball and not um, yeah. football. Now he's a bit of a wild child, an ex Hajduk junior. Um, was supposed to go to the second division um, and play with um, uh, Orient. Uh, no, sorry, I think it was Opatia, um, which is a team that he did fill in um, last year. Um, he's now been signed by Hrvatski Dragovoljac, who have got like six or seven ex NK Rijeka players, including the uh, Rijeka junior coach, Tadic. So uh, that's going to be another new look team, Dragovoljac, but uh, black does suit him, doesn't it? Yeah, well, so and with the with the artwork on the arms too, it just makes it stand <laughs> yeah. out a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll 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 have to ask our second guest if he knows much about Taunchi Kukoc. Like I said, he's got a brilliant name. Um, but that that gives us an opportunity now to introduce our next guest, and what a pleasure it is in our only our second um second episode and second season. Uh, to have a, a guest of this calibre. Uh, he started off at Canberra, Croatia, made a name for himself at the Melbourne Knights, and one of the most coolest, calmest um, defenders you've ever seen. Um, him and, and Pokorny, David Savinsky, they were just a delight to watch down at, at the yeah. Melbourne Knights. Um, and then he went for, um, overseas, an illustrious career. But enough about me, I'm talking too much. Let's hear it from the man himself. Um, let's yeah. introduce to you the current Croatian under-19 coach, Josip Šimunić. Josip, a massive, massive um, hello. Welcome to the show to you. Tonči and Josip, uh, thanks for, for calling me. It's uh, it's great to, great to be on, mate. Thanks for calling me. Happy, and happy Australia Day, huh? Happy yeah, Australia happy Day, Day, mate. Day. Um, now, okay. now you're, you're having a little bit of a break with your lovely family and your young family. You're back in the uh, hometown or the birthplace of... Uh, of uh, of Canberra, what do you call your hometown these days? Is it Zagreb? Is it Canberra? Is it sort of somewhere six months here, Listen, six months there? Uh, COVID I'm, willing? No, no, my my hometown is always going to be Canberra. I was born here, so uh -huh. at uh, Zagreb is a beautiful place, and and uh, at but Ipak Ipak, I was born in Canberra. Yeah, yeah, great, great stuff. Yossi, from one Good Yossi news. to another. Yeah, well, it's it's fantastic to have you on the show, your spirit. And um, with your time in in Canberra, and you've had opportunity to catch up with family and friends, no doubt, and probably seen some some of the community uh, in itself. Uh, from you haven't been back for a little while because of COVID and whatnot. But uh, in in terms of getting out and about, what's what's your perception of how we how we going as a football community and as a Croatian community in general? Well, I think um, I think it's, it's I'm really really glad that the Connor Knights have made the Premier League. Um, mm. It's it's a it's a great achievement uh, for when you see uh, where the guys started from. Um, they've done exceptionally well, and I, got, I take my hat off to them, to the boys, and um, they're, they're doing a good job. They're doing a great job. Uh, Canberra Croatia is always or Canberra FC, how they call it now, uh, is is a club also. Um, uh, they do well every single year. Uh, they were always expected to win the tournament, uh, win the win the championship. But uh, now two Croatian clubs in the in the, the top league in Canberra. That, that's yeah. a that's a big thing. And um, you know, good, good, that's it's all about uh, getting the people together. Exactly what yeah. Alex said before: getting the people together, uh, doing the doing your best. And um, at the end of the day, uh, that's what it's all about. Um, uh, football. You play football for 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 the people. Um, the ones who play for themselves, they don't stay stay around for that long. Uh, but it's it's for the people, and um, you know, as growing up in Canberra, 
I, I was uh, I, I played my junior football at Canberra, Croatia. Then I went to the institute. Uh, I danced caller for 12 years uh, at, at O'Connor uh, for Cardinal Discipline. Now, the big the question, Josipe, did that help you with your football skills? Dancing I was going to say, it yeah, explains the balance. <laughs> 100%, guys. I'm telling you, that, that's one of the things that I actually never... never uh, that, that's that's one of the secrets be, uh, that's got to do with the, the coordination and that. Like... <laughs> They, um, we, we, it, it's, it's very important. When I was, um, when I was growing up, I didn't realize how important that, that was until I actually went uh, yeah. overseas. I seen other communities, the first in Hamburg, then in Berlin. Uh, it's, 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 it's great. You know, you go to, you go to, they've got their own soccer clubs there. Yeah. Uh, you got church on Sundays and, and, and it's, it's very, very important. I mean, you guys know that better than me, yeah. but, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, yeah. Now, you bring a really good point, and, and I'm gladly going to correct you because you said now um, they're called Canberra FC. Guess what? They're back to being called Canberra Croatia. Um, so two years ago, I think it was, there was a, 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 a well, new new rule, I guess, where clubs could call themselves by their old name. So Gwalab Croatia, Canberra Croatia now are a, actually able to be called that, which is which is really good. But, mate, um, you bring a really interesting point about the Croatian community, um, and, and you went to Germany, spent... 14 years or whatever it was, lived in Croatia for a bit. And then obviously you, you'd come back every so often. Um, over that period of 14, 15 years, um, you obviously would have seen huge changes in the Croatian community. And we keep saying um, soccer is one of those last bastions of, 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 or tools that keeps the community together. Uh, how important is it now? You've got young kids. Your SIP's got a bit older kids. I've got younger kids as well. The third generation, that is. How important are these Croatian clubs to keeping that Croatian culture alive here in Australia? Well, very important. Um, listen, uh, we're all, I think, lucky enough to be born in, in probably the, 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 the greatest country in, in, in the world, one of, or one of the greatest countries in the world in Australia. But mm -hmm. um, we shouldn't forget our heritage. We shouldn't forget where we come from. Uh, we should always ask ourselves where our parents came from, where mm. our grandparents came from. Uh, because I believe that uh, by knowing that and uh, getting to know all that gets um, gets you uh, to go in a certain direction in life. You 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 learn basically who you are, what you are, and it gives you maybe an idea about um, going forward uh, in which direction uh, you, you're, you're who you are and what you are. Uh, I I've been um, around the, the world a lot, a lot in the Croatian communities. And I've seen uh, basically everywhere where I go, it's the same thing. Um, it's it's slowly dying down. Um, kids aren't uh, speaking the language anymore. Uh, they unfortunately, I don't want to criticise anyone, but you know, because everyone's got the right to do what they want. But I, I think it's a lovely thing uh, if ki if if um, people go to church or try and go to church every single Sunday, if it's possible. Because uh, you know, it helps you in life, and um, and again, it's part of our culture. And and I think it's um, it's a great thing. Um, it's a great thing that what all these clubs are doing and, and trying to keep it going, uh, not just the soccer clubs, but anything to do with um, with, with Croatia, the caller groups. The, mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of uh, a lot of things, uh, and, and I'm really I'm, I'm a I, I if I can help in any any way, uh, I'm 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 a big uh, big fan of that, and because that's how we're all, uh, Joe. You, uh, Tonchi, myself, we were all brought up in, in that surroundings and, and I think it helps us um, or it helped us to know uh, who we are and what we are. Spot yeah. on. And I mean, interesting points that you're, you're making there around, you know, having that foundation of, of community around you and, and helping, you know, it takes a village to, to raise a child, right? It's that sort of mentality. You you have a a, a a fantastic opportunity where your involvement with, in football you get to see talented youth come through and looking for national selection. When you cast your eyes across the the the, the boys that you see come through, do you feel like the ones that have got a, a good constitution of that foundational model um, help those individuals deal with the highs and the lows better? Does, uh, does it stand I think out? So. Does it stand out? I, I think so. I think it, by playing, by going through a lot of things in life, my experiences, um, I, I, I believe that uh, I can help every single one of those kids. Um, it's, it's up to me 
to try and find the best players possible. Uh, and uh, I, I believe that uh, also the, the, the players uh, in Croatia have unbelievable, exceptional talent. Talent, But uh, there's boys who are born outside Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Australia, Canada, mm -hmm. America, where I believe that they, they should be also... Um, uh, looked at and now um, the the Croatian Football Federation um, the, for the last 10 days was in America um, trying to get camps happening trying to organize some camps uh, they wanted to come to to Australia uh, now in this time but they couldn't get a visa because obviously because of um, um, because if you're not an Australian citizen and all these exemption all those rules yeah, uh, yeah. They, they're planning to come out in April um, there's a big possibility that I'll come as well. That I don't know exactly what what's looking like, but oh. to start organising some camps, and I don't know exactly how that's going to look like. But um, they've been trying to do it for a few years. The, the ex president yeah. Davor wanted to do it before COVID started. Unfortunately, COVID came, and then it was all called off. And um, that's for me. Uh, I I would I'm that type of person. I I think that. One thing is talent, but uh, if you know who you're presenting and what you're presenting, uh, I think you can always pull out that that extra um, five, ten, twenty, whatever you call it, percent or that that extra. Because I believe that uh, when you put that national team uh, top on, then there's there's nothing more sacred sacred than that top. Well, Mate, yeah, that's you're, you're, there's some breaking news for you, Tonch. Yeah, you know, we're getting the, the well, ass out here for a yeah. Camp. Well, exactly. Now, speaking of the highness, now, oh, we got to tread carefully because you are employed by the highness as, as Croatia's under-19 coach. But um, a new, there's been a new president, uh, Marian Kustic, who, who mm -hmm. took over from Davor Šuker. And he's been doing really well in the sense going around the country, talking to a lot of clubs and even mending old bridges like with Hayduk Split, for example. But one of the big things that's been happening in, 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 Cro, um, in Croatia has been the rollout of a lot of hybrid pitches. Um, and that the high NSC seems to be funding a lot of those. I know, um, you know, down in Dalmatia, a lot of the clubs that have really struggled with um, poor surfaces and poor facilities are starting to get really, really nice pitches. And, and we see that with the high NL. I think it's something like now, if it's not all of the pitches, most of them are actually got the hybrid, which is a sort of a half grass, half synthetic, whatever. Um, What's your take on 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 the, on the situation with the Croatian soccer scene in Croatia? Don't worry about the Vatrini. We see the Vatrini, but everything that's happening with the junior setups, the infrastructure, um, finances of clubs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what's 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 the situation like with Croatian football in general? Well, <clears throat> firstly. Um... The Croatian Football Federation is doing a lot uh, to try and help with the infrastructure. Uh, they've been doing it for years. Uh, I've, I've got now a, a very good insight uh, to see what they're doing, uh, how they're doing it, what they're trying to do. And I think you have to start from somewhere. And I think they're starting from somewhere uh, when we're talking about infrastructure. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, they're getting there slowly. Uh, if um, there, was, there was a guy who... Um, who I used to be at the institute with, uh, his name's Stuart McLaren, and uh, mm -hmm. he used to play up at Brisbane up north, and then eventually he uh, went to Scotland, married a Scottish woman, his wife's Scottish, and he stayed in, in Scotland. He's the under-16 Scottish coach, and basically he's doing his one of his badges. Um, Scott, uh, Stuart called me and asked me, you know, what do you guys in Croatia do that's it's amazing, you guys are second in the world? And I said to him, like, he's talking to me, and I asked him, what do you mean? And he goes, well, infrastructure, the way you work, the, the planning. And I go, listen, I go, if I was to show you uh, some of the pictures, uh, the camps where we go, I go, you wouldn't believe me, mate. You'd, you'd say that I'm, I'm not telling you the truth. I'm, uh, I go, the, the best, the thing that we do the best uh, in Croatia is improvise. Uh -huh. uh, and I'm I'm always of the opinion it's it's not as bad as what everyone thinks. It's not. I, I always try to look at it positive. Uh, that things are slowly coming into place. Uh, eventually, we will get our own stadium. Eventually, we'll get a second, a third, a fourth stadium. That that, yeah. that will all come. Uh, I can't talk too much about that because um, you know how it is. If you say something uh, directly or indirectly, uh, everyone takes it the wrong way. Uh, the yeah. intention is there. It's, it's a good intention, but um, I believe that um, in the next five to ten years, uh, a, the actual infrastructure uh, will, be, will be a lot, lot better than what it is now.
That's great to see. And um, and let's go back to the um, under nineteens, the Croatian under nineteen team. Um, who are some of the who are the some of the guns, the the future stars that we can really look forward to seeing? And uh, and what what does exactly your job as under nineteens coach entail? Do you scout a lot of other players and spend a lot of time watching some of these players both home and abroad? Well, basically, when I first started, um, I, I, I got to be honest. I had I didn't have too much of an idea um, where to start, uh, but you got to start from somewhere. So um, I got a lot of help from uh, the coaches from the under seventeens, the instructor Pedro Kirpan, and basically, um, it's up to me and the guys that who are with me in my in my team to to look at all the plays week in week out. Uh, I like I'm, I'm very I'm very um, a firm on uh, always like to have my team uh, to have a good character uh, to always give a hundred percent it's not easy I got a lot of calls um, a lot of calls from from different people agents parents and, and all that type of stuff uh, it's 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 crazy it's um, it's it's crazy I never knew that something like that that existed but yeah. it exists obviously yeah. <laughs> and it's up to me to, to be the most correct to, to everyone um, I, yeah. I can't Tell everyone um, you have to give 100%, you have to be pushed and everything. And if I don't do it for whatever reason, that yeah. means uh, everything what I say falls um, fall, falls into the ground. So um, it's an interesting job. Uh, the boys, it's it's a very, very interesting age uh, where they're slowly getting from junior football coming into senior football. Um, I, the, Every single player that I've had is, is extra talented. Uh, the only problem, in my opinion, uh, in general with the mentality, uh, is that uh, there's so much, so many people around them, uh, telling them what they want to hear, uh, instead of them putting their he heads down and working, uh, working hard to to achieve the goal, what what they want, and um, and they have to they have to, I, um, I, I believe, uh, take uh, everything into their own hands because uh, to rely on a parent or an agent or someone from the club. Uh, they're not going to get very far, and and slowly they're they're starting to see that uh, it's actually not not their fault uh, the way that some things are structured here, but um, uh, in in Croatia. But it's it's getting better slowly. Uh, I'm I'm going to do my best, uh, however long I'm going to be there, uh, to try and show them that um, hard work and and um, working on yourself every single day, having that goal to to try and be better today, tomorrow, the day after. Is the only way that you can do anything in life, not just in football, but but life in in general. It's it's interesting you say that about the um you know the different uh, opinions coming into the players' ears and maybe clouding their own perspective of themselves. With the young group that you're working with at the moment, how many of them how many of them play in a senior setup somewhere, whether it be a second division or a third division? Uh, in total, I think we have. Seven, seven players, seven or eight players who play regularly yeah. in, in the senior football. There's a few that have gone up from me to, to the under 21s to Igor to Vishan. Yeah. Uh, they're playing obviously in the first uh, first league and playing really well. Uh, it's a very good generation. Um, I think in the next few months, I think that number will get closer to, to 13, 14, 15. The, basically, wow. the whole squad. So. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like? Do you feel like that jump coming into the, the, those players that are now in senior football, in whatever league they might be playing in, and if you get some more jumping over, do you feel like maybe those voices from the periphery might sort of quieten down a bit whilst they focus in club land at a senior level where they get hard and fast information where they have to work out whether or not they're going to take it or not? Listen, uh, <laughs> there's in life, uh, when you have also... Uh, disappointments um, that that's also one part of life uh, not, life life's not always planned out uh, to be uh, beautiful and, and nice and uh, your whole life when you when you do have a, um, a disappointment for whatever reason that is or for whatever uh, you have to get up and, and keep going mate and you've got to prove uh, that person wrong or those people wrong or your coach or your whoever uh, you have to, and at the end of the day you have to prove it t towards uh, t to yourself because um, if you want to make something in life, um, uh, it's it's whatever's. I always I'm always of the opinion whatever's easy in life, uh, it doesn't uh, have any any vrijednosti. It doesn't have any mm -hmm. value. Uh, whatever's difficult uh, has a lot of value, and that's mm -hmm. 
that's that's how life is um like i said in in football in sport and and in life in general so speaking of life um life in croatia what's it like in croatia i mean you know we, we know it's a beautiful place to go for a holiday um and and generally people say it's very difficult to live but but your experiences you know just adapting to the croatian mentality as opposed to the australian croatian uh, mentality Croatia, honestly, is the for me the the most beautiful place in the world to live. What I've uh -huh. seen, um, yep. if if you're financially uh, okay, that you don't have to uh, worry too much about uh, paying the bills, I think there's no better place in the world to live. Um, it's very very safe, uh, which is I think uh, the older I get, the more and more I see that um, it's it's. The safer the place is, the the, the better it is. And when you have yeah. uh, children, your family, then um, you you as a as a parent, you want them to be, um, you know, being you want them to be be safe always. And I think uh, Croatia is very very safe. Um, it's a beautiful country. Well, I, I, got, I don't know where to start from, from yeah. the mountains, <laughs> the, mountains the, city, the, the coast, the to. to uh, Slavonia, everywhere you go, it's 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 beautiful. Good, good Goodness people, me, mate. a lot to offer. If yeah. if, if you ever if you ever give up a career in football, I think you've got a career in literature in in poetry, mate. That was from the mountains <laughs> to the sea. <laughs> Tell you, Nesta <laughs> Make a song. We can write a song, yeah. mate. We'll have to, uh, sing a Absol song for us, Absolutely, but uh, yeah, we'll have to. Yeah, there's there's a quite a few. Well, we had Mickey Cholina on last week, Dandy Nong City coach and drummer of major minor so we might be able to uh, speak to them as well but uh, all jokes yeah. aside Josipe how can we now bridge that gap between the diaspora and the, the domovina how can we with Croatian with football um, get both the Croatian football scene and the Australian Croatian clubs closer is it a matter of, um, of brother sister arrangements with with clubs is it a matter of um, academies down under or whatever the case may be what, what in your eyes can we do to, to to get even closer than we are. I think that what the Savas is trying to do now, I, like I said, I hope it, it happens in, in April. Uh, what they're doing, they're doing the first step. Um, I've been talking for years about something to, to make some type of arrangement, some trips, some camps, I don't know what. I, I know that, that clubs have came here, the Dynamo came a few times and, and, and all that, but you know what? It's It's got to be... It's gotta be um, Porsche, then it's got to be uh, honest. And uh, I think that the first step, what the Savas is doing, is the most important step. And everything else after that, I think uh, with the more and more experiences uh, that they have, they'll come to. Um, I, I think that they should p potentially open the door, or that's what will happen, for all good young kids, uh, or not, not good, any kid, uh, if they want, like to, like to come to Croatia for a trial anywhere, in any club that they want to go live there because of soccer. Uh, get open open the door for them and 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 uh, that's yeah. I think that's yeah. that's the most important thing and I think that's gonna happen very very quickly and at the end of the day um, not everything's soccer man not everything's football uh, there's more yeah. important things in life than, than yeah. football even though we all love it but um, football is one part of life um, and and after that there's a lot of other, a million other things that are probably more important than football so. Bill Shankly wouldn't agree with you, but I think we do agree with you. <laughs> Bill Shankly, the great Liverpoolian who said, what would he say? Life is not a matter of football. Football is not a matter of life or death. It's more important than that. More important than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, you're spent. That was maybe in the 60s. Just just on the back of that question from Tonch, but maybe a little bit more uh, poignant towards the player itself. Now, Let's, take, let's say, for example, round one of uh, the Canberra Premier League was on this weekend and you're, and you're around in the stands. There's, there's, a young, there's young players who are up, out on the pitch. What, what would you be looking for to, to, for you to think this player would do well in the national setup? Now, this, this, this I'm asking you for in terms of the advice that we could share with the youngsters coming up through the ranks now between ages 14 and 17 who would fall in that bracket where you would, you would be investigating options for the national team okay there's there's a few things um when when i watch any type of game like again i'm, I'm learning along the way uh, what i've what i've noticed um or very often i've made assumptions about certain players when i watch certain games uh is that one game cannot really uh, it's it's hard to tell if someone has a blinder scores a hat-trick um 
that's always good. But uh, how would he? How would that player be in a different setup? How would he be in a in a in a in a in a more more difficult surroundings? Um, and then again, it's it's hard to assess what type of surrounding that that game was that I just saw that player score three goals. How would he do in in another another type of league, a more maybe quicker league? Uh, and it's hard to it's hard to to tell sometimes, but. Uh, there are certain things that you look for. Uh, there are certain profiles, or certain different positions that profile player that I look for. And if I was to see someone a few times uh, who would impress me, whatever I'm looking for, uh, I would like to always give a player like that a chance. Uh, we're going to have a, a friendly game now, uh, I think on the 10th of March. Um, and I've got seven or eight players who I would love to give a go and I'm going to give them a go. Uh, who I've watched, uh, and my my, um, uh, my my the boys that are working with me, we've watched them. We've got uh, reports down. We do reports every single time we watch games, and I'm going to give them a chance. Uh, and because I believe they deserve a chance for what I've seen and what what my uh, colleague have seen, and then at the end of the day, you're going to be put in a surrounding. Uh, and if you do well, then you're going to keep you're going to keep getting called up. It's as simple as that. Yeah, so absolutely. it's not easy to see someone score a hat trick, and then you yep. think, "Oh, okay, this this kid's amazing." Uh, you have to put him in in that setup um, because it's hard to sometimes see what type of um, uh, quality there was in that game, um, and it's 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 hard to tell sometimes. So yeah. Now, mate, before we let you go, we're almost um, at the end of time. The referee's about to blow his whistle, but before he does that, we're going to ask one one quick question, mate. You've you've had a very successful career from a Canberra boy, boy that worked his way up to the old National Soccer League and then went overseas and and made an international star of himself. Um, what's what's the the the? I'm putting you on the spot here. What's the one biggest thing that you piece of advice you would give to the young players out there? That are tuning into the Ozcrow Soccer Show if they are wanting to be a uh, professional footballer overseas. There's two things. Um, try try to become better every single day, every, through every training and every game. Uh, every time you you get on the field, do everything you can to be better, uh, day in day out, week in week out, year in year in. Uh, I always say to the boys, uh, the, the best example of, of that, what I just said, is Luka Modric. Uh, and now it's easy to say everyone's seen Luka's career, but uh, Luka, Luka had, had his problems uh, when he went from, from Dynamo to Tottenham a few months. It, it took him a while to settle in. But then he became, he kept working on himself, and then he became the best player in England. He went to Real Madrid. At the beginning, they were, they were saying that's one of the worst transfers ever. Uh, Luka Modric, years later... Uh, best player in the world, uh, missing the, the sky's the limit. That's yeah, that, yeah. that's one thing, and the second thing uh, is enjoy yourself. Uh, you have to enjoy what you do. If you if if you go on the field and you're not enjoying yourself, you're putting pressure on yourself for whatever reason, um, then don't do that, mate. Then you may as well go do something else. You have to enjoy what you do, and if you do that. Uh, at the end of the day, everyone, everyone um, thinks that they have to become a football star uh, overseas or that's the goal. Your, your goal should be to become the best that you can be at whatever you're doing. And when you know that, you, know, you can uh, go in front of a mirror, look at yourself and, and uh, you, you've got no, no problems with yourself. So that, that's my Double. advice. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh. Mate, on that note, thank you so much for being a part of um, of the Ozcrow Soccer Show. I'm sure those um, words of wisdom will be conveyed to the hundreds, maybe thousands as well, that do do uh, come across our, our show. Uh, how much longer are you here in Australia before you head back back uh, to the Epa I'm, I'm leaving on Friday, Friday evening, so on Saturday oh, I'll be back in We Zagreb, caught you so. then. Yeah. yeah. Mate. From the heat of, of, of Australia to the uh, the the, the uh, freezing coldness of Croatia, but uh, nonetheless, I'm sure certainly you're going to certainly um, warm the hearts of a lot of young players in Croatia as you become instrumental in their development. So once again, thank you very much, Josip, for joining us. Hvala, Josip. Josip, thank you guys, and, and I wish you all the best, and see you guys soon. Sako dobro, Sean. Look forward to it, mate. All the best. That's uh, what a what a lovely, lovely down to earth play a person. Um, uh, Josip Shimunic is joining us there, and um, that that video, I think, sure, that interview will be played many a many a time. So, uh, 
Um, but we, we, a big shout out to uh, our friend down in Melbourne who teed that up. Uh, who was Steve it? Steve Vukasevich, Sluggo, well Slugger. done, mate. Thanks for <laughs> helping us out there. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, legend there. And uh, before we do go, I do have to pop, pop this photo up. We talk about the third generation coming in. Um, now, I've, sent, I've been sent this photo during the course of this show, and we've also been getting some really good correspondence either via email, um, um, in the comments section, or um, even SMSing. But this is a photo of uh, my nephew, young Harry. Harry Prusats there in Geelong. Oh, Look at him. He's all decked up in his Croatia outfit. He's looking at... Uh, that uh, the, the that ugly ki- um, strico on his left and that very very handsome looking streak on his right. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> and, uh, good, Harry. Good, good on you. Good old Harry, and uh, you know he used to, you know, w- w- when he was very small, he used to call Croatia Igaka Igaka. So every uh-huh. time Croatia, he sees the red and white Igaka Igaka. So good on Harry. Okay, um, folks, he has to, he has to go tuck in Oliver now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Actually, his bigger brother. Uh, folks, if you've got a, a, a photo of your kids all decked out in their Croatian gear or their Hayduk split Macron gear or Dinamo Zadnik. Or even their or local club. Or, yeah. Czech, or their local yeah. club watching the, us. Watching North us. Geelong top or Melbourne Knights top. Yep. And, uh, um, and watching us either on the big screen or an iPad or on an iPhone or a desktop computer. It doesn't matter. Send it through and we'll gladly put a photo of your uh, little one um um, watching watching the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Now, mate, next week, let's talk about next week, a huge, huge show coming up next week. Yes. Uh, fortunately for myself, it's just a quick trip. <laughs> We've got the Gold Coast Knights on next week, and we look forward to catching up with the crew at the Knights. Uh, we'll no doubt speak with Adrian Pudic himself, and he was kind enough to share a few moments with us uh, in the lead-up to that FFA Cup right. match as well. So we'll expand on that conversation a bit more, and no doubt we'll catch up with their technical staff as well. A club that has just grown exponentially over the last 10 or so years, um, big shout out to Damien Bresic, former president there, um, who is also the general manager of football Gold Coast. Um, so Gold Coast Croatian community doing some amazing He's actually things. GM of Football Queensland for self. Is that right? Is that what it's called yeah, now? Yeah. A bit yeah, of a yeah, restructure. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, he's, yeah. He's big text now. He's big. Yeah. We, we big would text. great to see it. And also our special guest. Now we talk about the Australian Croatian connection. Um, someone who's got a very strong, very rich pedigree in the Croatian league and the Croatian national team, a former Vatreni member, and someone who's now playing in the A League, mate. Who have we got next week? We've got uh, none other than I- Ivan Kelova joining us for a, a big bash about, about his journey through life in football and his experience in Australia so far. Yeah, so all you Melbourne Victory fans, but also he has become a, a cult figure amongst the Victory fans, but also, um, yeah, Dinamo Zagreb fans, fans of Croatian football, you've got something to really look forward to next week. It should be awesome, should be um, exciting. I mean, in the meantime, a big, big shout out to Vladimir Zetovic, who is tuning in. He said hi in, his, in the comments, and we've also got Marko Maric. Uh, they are our gold VIP members. You too can become a member simply by going to www.patreon.com forward slash Ozcrow Soccer Show. Um, it's episode two. You've seen what we're doing, what we're trying to do. And we can, you know, as, as, as Josip Shimonich said, you play soccer, you play football for the people. And we are certainly doing this for the people. So we hope to uh, uh, keep bringing you um, many, many more episodes to come. Next week's episode, episode three, featuring... Gold Coast Knights and um, special guest Ivan Kelava. Um, and then we've got another club lined up for the week after that. But, uh, mate, it's going to be a good week leading up to uh, next week's equally massive show. Yeah, look forward to it. And, and before we do tune out for tonight, big shout out to all my family and friends at Wednesday nights who have been celebrating Australia Day hard and fast as they only know how to. Jivili uh, Momci, and I look forward to catching up with you guys soon. On that note, we're going to uh, bid everyone a fair, fair, farewell and thank you for being a part of tonight's show. Until next week, you've been tuning in to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Thank you very much for being a part of tonight's program. See you next Wednesday at 8.30 p.m.